You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin wants the city of Seattle to pay her legal tabs for the failed recall effort. That tab will come to $240,000, quarter million dollars, asking the city of Seattle to pay. What's going on? Let's check it out. If you're new here, I'm Sean Reynolds. I'm the owner of uh, Summit Properties Northwest, Reynolds and Klein Appraisal, and I host this podcast, Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Let's jump on in. All right, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin wants Seattle to pay her $240,000 legal tab after failed recore efforts. This is in a report. Paying the legal fees of elected officials is allowed under Washington state law, a report said. And I've done a podcast on um, Shama Sawant. She's our resident socialist city uh, City of Seattle council member. And I think um, the city of Seattle, the council members decided they voted, they do a vote, on whether they will pay for the legal tab of a council member who's going through a recall process. And what happens, and this is what happened with Mayor Durkin, was that it got elevated all the way up to the state Supreme Court. Will that happen with Sawant's recall? It's already happening. That goes to, I think, the state Supreme Court uh, January 8th, her recall. So we got a, we've had a couple of recalls of some pretty major politicians here in the city of Seattle. Shocking, I know, because with political leadership the way it's been, who would have ever guessed? It's like, you know, we're going we're gonna to vote these people in and then, ah, oh, we don't really like what they're doing. Ah, oh, we need to recall them. Get them out of there. It's this yo-yo effect. Let's talk about Durkin, though. Let's talk about a quarter million, almost a quarter million dollars. I'm rounding up by 10 grand. That's pretty close to a quarter million, isn't it? A lot of money. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin has asked the city council to pay her legal fees of approximately 240000 following a failed recall effort against her earlier this year, according to reports. You might ask yourself, how in the world do you spend two hundred and forty grand in legal fees? Well, if you've ever been involved in a serious lawsuit, maybe a serious divorce, where there's multiple attorneys involved, they get the paperwork going, and you got to respond to each piece of paperwork. Otherwise, you've got a chink in your armor. You have to, you'd have to respond, and you can't respond on your own, because if you make a mistake, that could cost you basically the whole case, because you, as a citizen without a law degree, or knowledge of the law, operating on your own, defending yourself, terrible idea, terrible idea. So over the years, I've been in court as a professional witness, as a real estate appraiser in various lawsuits, and I've watched people defend themselves, and it is a train wreck. And the judge has to be, you know, he or she has to be, you know, pretty, they've, they've got to be really willing to work with the person because the person doesn't really know what they're doing and it's just it doesn't make any sense and people try and save a buck and then they end up with their own worst client themselves and it does such a disservice you might say hey but if you can't afford an attorney figure it out you got to make that happen because otherwise you get end up in court in the wrong end of a lawsuit you're hosed you're done it's not good so that's just kind of how court goes. So, two hundred and forty grand for Mayor Durkin. The recall campaign against the sixty-two-year-old Democrat ended in October when the state, here it is, Supreme Court unanimously rejected the plan, which was led by six Seattle residents who blamed the mayor for city for city police using tear gas against protesters during unrest sparked by the May twenty-fifth death of George Floyd in police custody in Minneapolis. All right, I'm going to talk about this for a second. I th- that whole recall. I think there's other stuff that she's done, but the whole recall for police using tear gas against protesters. Well, the protesters are doing stuff they're not supposed to be doing, and in all the time I spent over at Chop Jazz, whatever you want to call it, I never saw an instance where they just, where the cops just willy nilly threw a tear gas canister into a crowd of people just for fun. They're always doing it for a specific reason. And let's be honest, the protesters are whiny crybabies. That's what they are. 
Nobody says anything when you throw a Molotov cocktail into a police station, but you throw a canister of tear gas, which makes your eyes water and red. It's, it's just not that bad. And they run around, oh, give me some milk to put in my eyes. Whiny, whiny crybabies. That's, that's the way I see it. But people, there was, a, um, there was some legal action against the police basically using any of their normal forms of crowd control. And look how well that has ended up. Not good. It's not good. On Monday, Durkin announced that she won't seek a second term in 2021. The Seattle native, a former U.S. attorney for the Western District of Washington, faced sharp criticism over the summer from President Trump and others over the city's handling of the so-called CHOP autonomous zone in the city's Capitol Hill neighborhood. Yeah, that was a train wreck. Started off as the summer of love devolved into just a crime-ridden multiple block area that the police had to just go in and clear out on July 1st. And that was the only reason it got cleared out, in my opinion, as a podcaster over here in Bellevue. It's because the mayor's house got marched on by Shama Sawant and her merry men group of followers and women who basically marched on the mayor's house, did a little graffiti, probably did some vandalism, rocked the boat a little too hard and the mayor said you're done clearing out the chop and that's what happened crazy time crazy time and so it it takes just something severe to get to these points and then people are like oh we gotta do something recall durkin they just wanted her out they didn't believe in her political views and what she was doing and it's like all right we know we voted you in but you know what we kind of want to go back on that. Let's do a recall. So there are times where I think a recall is warranted. And, you know, Shama Sawant has a recall going right now That's that, again, is going to go to the Washington State Supreme Court here in 2021, early 2021. We'll have to see how that goes. But she originally faced charges on six different things. That got cut down. All the CHOP stuff got cut out. The two charges from CHOP got cut out. And now she's down to four things she spent a couple of grand doing stuff that um, was outside of what she was supposed to spend it on. She um, did some high. She outsourced some of her hiring to her own political group instead of doing it internally as a city of Seattle council member. She allowed the protesters inside City Hall. Not a good call. And she also led a protest on Mayor Durkin's house. So she's up on those charges. We'll just have to see how that goes. But I think the city of Seattle... Uh, authorized seventy five thousand dollars of her recall uh, bills, and that that'll go at least double that since it's going to the state supreme court. Because in these events, you've got attorneys working behind the scenes. It's not like they're just rolling up in court and all right, we had an hour in court, I'm just going to charge you one hour. No, there's all kinds of preparations and all kinds of paperwork that goes back and forth before they actually end up in court. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. And sometimes on a recall notice with a uh, something of significance like the mayor of Seattle, you're going to have multiple attorneys. You're going to have probably a couple of lead attorneys, maybe one lead attorney, and then a bunch of junior attorneys who arguably bill a little bit less than that legal team. That's what's going to go on. It's not like you got one attorney handling a divorce. And in a nasty divorce, you still might have a team of four attorneys. You might have two. You might have a trial attorney. You might have the attorney who does all the paperwork back at the office. That gets expensive. You can spend, I don't know, $325,000 in a divorce pretty quickly. That's what happens. We're back to chop. That occupation of several city blocks by anti-police activists eventually led to multiple shootings that included at least two deaths. In September, Durkin also saw the city council overturn her attempt to veto funding cuts for the city police. She's been kind of that person right in the middle is like, I'm the mayor of the city and I know that if we have fewer police officers, Crime is going to skyrocket, and we're not going to be able to handle whatever crime we've got going on right now. So defunding the police, I know politically it's not a good move, but I got to go there. That's what happened. And on that one, I am totally in agreement with the mayor, but because it's, it's kind of one of those, to me, it's a no-brainer. 
You don't defund the police when the city is in a time of increased violent crime and homicides. That's not the direction you go. It's just not. But that's the way we're going right now. In uh, uh, So at the beginning of that month, police chief Carmen Best had departed and apparently demoralized by efforts to strip her department of crime-fighting resources. We had her police chief leave, and now we've got an interim police chief, and that police chief will probably stay until a uh, new mayor gets elected. That's my understanding. The mayor in late November agreed to a budget deal calling for an 18% cut in police funding, for, which was far less than the 50% cut that anti-police activists were calling for. Remember at CHOP, all the signs said, defund the police by 50% right now. That's what they wanted. They wanted it done now, not later. Well, we got 18%. And let's be honest, that actually ended up being maybe like an 8% cut because you've always got 10% of fluff in any budget, especially a budget that's like $411 million, I think was 2019, or maybe 2020. I, can't, I think it was 2020. It's a big number. That's a big, big number. Durkin didn't request funding for her legal fees sooner because she never expected the, retail, the recall case to reach the state Supreme Court. Merrill spokesman Kelsey Nyland told the Seattle Times via email. All right, that's fair enough. So we went further than we expected in court. Now we're at $240,000 that the city is having to pay in a time where their budget has massive red in it, massive negative numbers due to the coronavirus. So what do we do? Let's tax big, bus big business that is successful. Let's drive out that business long term. The short term, we need to, we need to fill that gap in our budget. Now we got to pay a quarter million in Durkin's fees. We need, we need Amazon to pay for all this. Amazon, will you help us out? Will you cut us some checks? You won't? We're going to force you with a payroll tax that's that just basically taxes the companies that employ highly paid employees. That's what we're doing. All right. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? No. Long term, that is a train wreck. And that is, it's a train wreck that is happening right now as businesses literally leave Seattle, including Amazon, to come right here to Bellevue and other pro-business areas where we don't have ridiculous taxes like that that tax a specific segment of the business population. In September, the city council voted 7-1 to one to pay the legal fees of Socialist Council member Shama Sawant. Did a podcast on that. And I was like, all right, if this is... If this is what you basically say as a guideline, which is as an elected official, if you face a recall notice, we the city will pay your bills. It's kind of like it's kind of like an insurance policy on taking off public office. All right. And who gets to pay those those uh, fees? You, the taxpayer, you get to pay those fees. You hired somebody to do a job and then you realized we don't like the way she's doing it, going to recall it. Now you're going to pay fees for the legal defense of that person you're trying to get out of office. Whole thing's a mess. Kind of like Seattle, right? Um, so in September, the city council voted 7-1 to one to pay the legal fees of Socialist Council member Shama Sawant, who faces a recall campaign as well as that is still, un um, as well that is still underway, the Times reported. Savant abstained from that vote and <laughs> she did not vote to she, she just didn't vote that's bottom line right it's, it's you're on the council you normally vote on stuff but no she abstained from that one not even going to explain that you get that one she ex abstained from that vote and council member deborah juarez voted no the report said Paying the legal fees of elected officials is allowed under Washington state law, the newspaper reported. So it is law, but you still got to vote on it. On Thursday, the state Supreme Court issued its opinion regarding its October ruling in the Dirk, Durkin case. In the statement, Justice Mary Yu wrote that critics of Durkin were manifestly unreasonable in arguing, <laughs> manifestly unreasonable. They were really, really unreasonable, is what she's saying. Yeah, manifestly unreasonable in arguing the mayor should have fired the police chief to prevent police from injuring protesters. 
Durkin was right to yield the best experience in police matters, you argued, because as mayor, she is not the chief of police. We have a division of labor here. One person runs the police department. The other person is the mayor. The, it's like any business. The mayor should rely on her underlings to run their individual departments. That's how this works. But instead, in a manifestly unreasonable manner, she was asked to basically do something that's way outside of her, her wheelhouse. And the judge said, nope, not going there. You also, judge, uh, you also said Durkin directed police to comply with a federal court order on the use of crowd weapons, contrary to what the mayor's critics had claimed, the Times reported. So she did comply. There's a lot of instances. You know, over this summer, there were 19,000 complaints against the Seattle Police Department. I read that, 19,000. Most of them just the most Mickey Mouse complaints you could imagine. Just complete nonsense. Let's tie them up in red tape. So if you have a complaint against the Seattle Police Department, good luck with that. It is buried in enormous red tape. And with defunding the police, guess what is going to happen? Nothing. I had a retired uh, gentleman from I can't remember where ask me to and he was a former police officer ask me to forward on information um, to the police department. And it's like, you know what, unless you are dying, unless there's a major felony taking place, the police don't have time for you. Unfortunately, that's just what's going on. They are not sitting around. Police department is, in Seattle is not sitting around waiting for your complaint to come in so they can focus on it and really get to the bottom of the issue. They are short staffed and they're doing the best they can. But complaints not high in the list of priorities, as a whole bunch of other crimes will not be high in the list of prior priorities, because we're not going to be arresting people for them, and we're not going to be prosecuting them. That's just what we're doing only in Seattle. All right, so that's it for me on this one. But as more stories come up on the whole recall notice, I don't think uh, the Shama Sawant thing did a podcast on that talking about her four charges against her I think that's got less than a 50-50 of going anywhere. Maybe the one of, maybe the two charges of leading protesters into City Hall, although nothing really happened, but that's just kind of a, is that like an ethics violation? I don't know. It's just a bad call. It's like, what are you thinking there? Oh, we're trying to get some change going here. I mean, taking the protesters into, you open up City Hall, this is going to be okay. Nothing wrong can happen with a bunch of Looney Tunes going into City Hall, right? A bunch of angry protesters. Nothing could go wrong there. How about the march on Mayor Durkin's house that is supposed to be an undisclosed address because she has put so many crazy people in jail as a prosecutor? How about that? Ah, that might have, that might warrant some problems for Shama Sawant. That's my opinion. Again, I'm not a legal expert. I'm a real estate guy. But I'm telling you what I think. You guys apparently appreciate it. I'm going to keep going. Keep doing this. Keep bringing you podcasts. All right. Thanks for being here, people. Much appreciated. I will see you on the next one. Until then. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out. 